Hello, welcome to the heavily delayed part 5 of Database Design Made Easy, where we are going to talk about Boy Scott Normal Form. Now, for a table to be in Boy Scott Normal Form, it has already to be in Third Normal Form. That means, if you recall from the last video, that all the non key columns must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. To be in boy scored normal form, that same condition must be met for the non key for the key columns as well. So now all the columns must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. And it is important to note that boy scored no normal form violations can only occur in tables that have at least one overlapping key. If there are no overlapping keys, then a table in third normal form is boy scored normal form by definition. Only when there are overlapping keys you need to check for BCNF violations. So let's look at an example. We are once more scheduling a technical conference and we have sessions identified by the atomic uh, columns track and session number and each session is scheduled to start at a certain time in a certain room and of course each session has its own name. Now just looking at it from a logical point of view you probably already recognize a few of the functional dependencies. So um, track and session number combined determine the room, the start time and the session name. That makes sense because track and session number combined is it identifies a unique session and every session can of course start at only one time, take place in only one room and it should only have a single name. Now because track and session number combined determine room, start time and session name, we now have a combination of columns that determine every other column in the table. That is a candidate key. So track and session number is a candidate key. If you look at another combination, room and start time, then you will notice that this combination also determines the other columns. because. For a given room and start time, you only want a single session there. You do not want two sessions to start at the same time in the same room. Imagine Grant Fritchie and me side by side on the stage, him talking uh, about personal development, me talking about execution plans, trying to wrest the microphone from each other's hands. You probably would be amused for a minute and then you would think, hey, I was here to learn and I'm not learning anything. So, no, we do not want two sessions to start at the same time in the same room. We only want a single session, which means that room and start time combined is another candidate key in this table. For a generic conference, these are all the functional dependencies you will find. You can check all the other columns. Session name by itself is not unique. Session name combined with start time or with room, well, with, with anything else, it's not uh, uh, does not de uh, determine any other columns. So these are the keys. However, that is true in a generic case. But what if my customer has a specific additional requirement? My customer likes to have uh, their conferences organized in such a way that all the sessions that belong to the same track are in the same room and conversely that all the sessions that are in a, a room belong to that same track. You see that in the sample data, both the AD sessions are in the blue room and there are no other sessions in the blue room. So there is a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between track and room, or in other words, a functional dependency where the track by itself determines the room and the room by itself determines the track. Because of these functional dependencies, we now also see some additional uh, keys exist in the table. Of course, track by itself and room by itself are not keys. They do not determine all the other columns. They determine just a single other column. But the combination of room and session number in this universe of this course actually determines track, start time and session name. Why? Well, room determines track. So give me a room and a session number, and based on the room, I can give you a track and a session number. 
And we already know that track and session number determines all the rest. So, room and session number determine the rest because of this specific extra rule. And that means that room and session number is also a key. And the same goes for the combination track and start time. Once more, we had unlogical combination, but because track determines room, we now can say that every combination of track and start time equates to a combination of room and start time, which determines all the other columns. So track and start time determines all the other columns. Yet another key. And now we see that we have a table with overlapping keys. You might not have found them if you had not looked carefully enough, because it is, of course, important uh, that you find all the functional dependencies and all the, uh, the candidate keys. And as you see here, two of the candidate keys um, are make logical sense, the other two do not make a logical sense. The combination of room and session number is a weird combination, and yet it is a candidate key purely from a technical point of view. But it is important that you identify all those functional dependencies and all those keys, because otherwise you wouldn't even see that there are overlapping keys, and you wouldn't check for BCNF violations. And in this case, there is a BCNF violation. Dependency track determines room means that one column, room, is dependent on a single other column, track. For third normal form, that's not a problem because room is a key column. In boys quad normal form, that doesn't matter. Room is a column and it cannot depend on a subset of a key. But it does depend on the subset of a key. So BCNF is violated. And why is that a problem? Well, that dependency on track, that track determines room, can be violated by this design. You see that I have reassigned session AD207 to room 610. If you just look at the table design on the left, you will see that none of the keys is violated. The database will allow you to make this change. But we did violate the business rule that track determines room, because now track AD takes place in two rooms, which is not what the organizer wanted. We want our database to prevent these violations, and this design doesn't, and that's why we should change it to BCNF. Similarly, we can also easily violate the business rule that room determines track by, for instance, reassigning session PD203 to the ground room. Now we have PD sessions and DBA sessions in the ground room, which again is what the organizer does not want. So all those problems are not prevented by the database design because we violated BCNF. Let's fix that then. Let's go back to our original data and then look at how to fix this. And if you watch the previous videos, you will know that if there are uh, functional dependencies that violate a normal form, you typically look at those functional dependencies and then create a new table with just the columns from those functional dependencies, track and room in this case. And then of course, based on those functional dependencies, you can in this case see that there are two key columns, they are not overlapping, and all the normal forms that we have covered so far are observed. Now, in the previous cases, we often had a table with one key column and one or more non-key columns, and then we could remove those non-key columns from the original table. Here, we can choose whether to keep the track column and remove room, or whether to keep the room column and remove track. Either choice is correct. In this case, I am going to, ch to choose to remove the room column, but the discussion would have been the same if I had removed the track column. Now, I cannot just remove this room column because it is included in a key constraint. And if I just remove the re room column, then that key constraint would be on session number only. And suddenly we would no longer allow both session AD205 and session BI205 to exist. And that is, of course, a via, uh, not correct in our universe of discourse. But we should also not just to drop a, a, a key constraint, right? Well, in fact, in this case we can, because remember, why did we add this constraint? Because it is implied by the other constraints 
plus the business rule that track determines room and room determines track. The constraint on track and session number plus the functional dependency track determines room implied a, a key on session number and room. But because this key is implied, it cannot be uh, violated anyway, so we don't hurt anything if we remove it. And the same goes for the key on room and start time. That key is implied by the key on track and start time plus the dependency that track determines room. So once more, this key can be removed and now the room column itself can be safely removed and we have a new design that uh, uh, protects all the business rules, including the ones that we did not protect before. We can no longer assign session AD207 to room 610. Sure, we can assign the entire AD track to room 610, but that is valid by all business rules. So the database should not prevent this, and it doesn't. And yeah, we can still try to reassign session PD203 to room grant by reassigning the PD track to the ground room, but now you see that there are two tracks in the same room which is not allowed by the business rules, but it's also prevented by the key constraint on the room column. So the database helps us protect against violations in this case. Exactly what we wanted and exactly why we want to go to Boyce Code Normal Form. However, sometimes Boyce Code Normal Form is impossible to achieve. Those cases are rare but they do exist. Let's return to the same example we had just before, but now the additional business rules are slightly different. Track still determines room, but room no longer determines track. We had to scale down. We only have three rooms available, but we still have four tracks. So we had to combine tracks DBA and PD into a single room and that means that we don't no longer have a functional dependency where room determines track. How does this affect the additional uh, uh, dependencies and keys that we found? Well, in the previous example, we thought uh, we saw that in that universe of discourse, room and session number determined track, start time, and session name, which resulted in a key on session number and room. But that is no longer the case, because room no longer determines track. We can no, no longer say that the combination grant 305 is automatically the combination DBA 305. It could also be the combination PD 305 if we rename the personal growth session to PD 305. The population you see on the left does not violate any business rule. But if we would add a key constraint on session number and room, then the database would prevent this valid population, which is of course not wanted. So no, there is no key on session number and room, because room and session number in this universe of discourse do not uh, determine track, start time and session name. However, the, co uh, the combination of track and start time, that combination still does determine session number, room and session name because track determines still determines the room so if you look at a track pd and start time uh, 1430 then because pd is always in grant it must be grant and 1430 so if we now reassign the execution plans uh, uh, session to the pd track and re reschedule it for 230 then this is already not allowed by the key on room and start time, but there is no way we can ever get two sessions with the same track and the same start time, because if it's the same track, it is the same room. So there is definitely a key on the combination on track and start time. So we now have less functional dependencies and less keys, but we still have a BCNF violation because room a key column, so no problem for third normal form, but a column, so a problem for BCNF, room is still determined by track, a subset of a key, which is not allowed. Is this a problem? Yes, this is a problem. 
because what if I change the population and reassign session AD207 to room 605? The database will allow this. None of the constraints is violated. But the dependency that track determines room, yeah, that is violated. We violate a business rule and the database does not prevent us. So, once more, we look at the violating functional dependency, track determines room, which gives us a new table with columns track and room. The key is obviously on the track column, and in this case there is no discussion, the room column must go. And again, we have this problem with a key that we cannot just remove. But this time the key is not an implied key, the key is not implied by anything. So if we actually remove this key and remove the room column, then we have an incorrect design. At this point, we may have removed the BCNF violation, but we have incorrect keys. For instance, what if I reassign DBA305, reschedule DBA305 to take place at 2.30? The database will allow it. All of the keys are observed. But DBA305 must be in the ground room. PD203 must also be in the ground room. So now we have two sessions in the ground room that start at 2.30. Remember Grant Fritchie and me standing side by side on that stage fighting for your attention? Not what we want. Not what we want the database to allow. So we should not use this table design. But we cannot leave the room column in either, because if we leave the room column here, then I could reassign the AD207 session to room 605. The database will not prevent this. All of the constraints are observed. But we have the business rule that the track must determine the room all the sessions for a track must be in a single room, and the AD track is now spread out across two rooms. So caught between a rock and a hard place, how can we fix this? Well, we can fix this by being very creative and doing something that the uh, relational model and the, the SQL standard do not even actually allow. We can create a foreign key between the track and rooms columns in the left hand table, pointing to the track and room columns in the right hand table. If you use MySQL, then you can actually just create this foreign key constraint uh, and it will be uh, stored in the database. If you use any other database system, then it will not allow you to create this foreign key constraint because the target of a foreign key constraint must always be a candidate key and the combination track and room is not a candidate key. But all databases that I know allow you to create a redundant extra key on track and room, and now you can create this foreign key. And while this introduces a new BCNF violation, you can see it in the right-hand side table, the short key already implies that room, the is dependent on track, but track is now part of a key which BCNF does not allow. However, I try to put my conscience at ease by calling this extra uh, key a technical solution for a problem and not a real key, and then uh, we, we can close our eyes, hold our nose, and pretend it's not the BCNF violation. Technically, it is. We still have a BCNF violation, but at least we prevent the change of reassigning re AD207 to the blue room. And we can use this solution in all cases, even if we have more columns that depend on the track column, like for instance the track name. In this case, we still can create that same non-standard foreign key by creating a technical key that is actually redundant. And in this case, we actually violate second normal form if you look at it from a technical point of view, because the track name column, which is a non-key column, now depends on part of a key, the track column. Again, ignore that longer technical solution key and pretend it's not a real key, but just a trick. 
but purists will probably uh, have your skin for this and yeah that's the problem with purists they value purity over practical use in this case I think that this is a very practical solution that makes sure that your database protects you from uh, violations of business rules but technically speaking none of those solutions are in BCNF because like I said this is an example where BCNF is simply not possible So we talked about tables that are or are not in boy squad normal form. And once all your tables are in boy squad normal form, then your data model is in boy squad normal form. That is the same sentence I had at the end of almost every module and it will remain the end of every module. That's all I have about boy squad normal form. Now, planned for next month, May 2024 and fingers crossed um, I plan to talk about elementary key normal form which is a less useful normal form but it's still an interesting normal form to look at so you can check it out uh, once it's available if you want to know more if you want to have the information now already if you want to go deeper or if you want a way to find all functional dependencies not only the ones that make logical sense but all that are there then check out my plural site course eight hours of in-depth coverage of database design you probably will not regret it please if you liked this video leave a like subscribe uh, leave a comment if you have a question or a comment and please tune in next time for elementary key normal form my name is hugo Cornelis. goodbye